Calaroga Shark Media. Hello and welcome to Palace Intrigue. I am your host, Mark Francis. Meghan Markle's handling of her lifestyle brand, American Riviera Orchard, is drawing criticism from royal commentator Richard Eden, who believes her approach reflects impatience. Speaking on Palace Confidential, Eden noted that the brand's social media account launched in March has yet to offer any products, a movie called Arrogant. Eden suggested Meghan may have hurried the announcement due to media speculation earlier this year, adding, anyone knows you don't launch a social media account and then do nothing. The whole point of social media is it's social and you socialize. He called the early launch a misstep, saying, it's definitely been launched before it's ready. It's all about impatience. According to royal biographer Angela Levin, the delay in Meghan's brand launch stems from Meghan's pattern of taking on numerous projects without necessarily following them through. Levin explained to GB News, she does all sorts of things of organizing early and then she leaves them. This is this terrible, like, American Riviera Orchard, which was actually originally done in April. We've got no further. Levin went on to highlight how the initial timing of the brand's announcement in April coincided with Prince William's work with the Diana Awards, suggesting that Meghan's timing may have been influenced by royal events. Levin stated, Why on earth would you try and sell something that was nowhere near ready, that you hadn't got the trademarks passed? It was sort of ridiculous. Lady Colin Campbell has similarly commented on the convenient timing of recent news about Prince Harry and Meghan purchasing a property in Portugal, which broke just as King Charles and Queen Camilla were on their royal tour. She remarked, Charles and Camilla are in Australia and Samoa, and we are speaking about Harry and Meghan and Portugal. They are geniuses. Mike Ryer, a media analyst, thinks Meghan is leaving a lot of money on the table by not starring in Suits LA. Mike said, this could become the costliest decision of her life and one that she may bitterly regret in years to come. The female lead character, a campaigning hotshot lawyer named Erica, was written with Megan specifically in mind and there is little doubt she would have been paid many times her original salary. Megan may need the extra money due to a new tax. In her autumn budget 2024 address, Chancellor Rachel Reeves unveiled a hefty tax increase on private jet air passenger duties taking on an extra 50% or four pounds per person. As mentioned, Megan has many interests, including her career as a writer of children's books. Megan's foray into children's literature with the bench has ignited some strong opinions in the literary world. While the book made waves when it was released in 2021, its UK sales numbers tell a different story with only 8,000 copies sold, according to Nielsen Book Scan. This modest performance has added fuel to the frustrations of children's authors who argue that the market is being overtaken by celebrities who seem to have a fast track to publication. Joshua Siegel, a poet and children's author, voiced his frustration, remarking, Writing for children is an art. It requires skill, practice, and discipline. Other authors, like James A. Lyons, added that non-celebrity writers often face years of rejections, unlike public figures who get, as he put it, a fast-tracked ticket to the front of the queue. On the upside, the bench is at least thought to be Meghan's own work, a 40-page reflection on father-son bonds, supposedly inspired by Prince Harry and their son Archie. In the meantime, Megan, if you'd like to reach more than 8,000 people, you're welcome to guest host this podcast anytime you'd like. Although we don't have the kind of $25 million for 12 episodes budget that Spotify had. We recently checked on Archetype's podcast rankings, and although Megan's podcast wasn't appearing on the US nor UK Apple charts, the program was number 116 on Apple Podcasts in Pakistan's Society and Culture subcategory. To be fair, she hasn't put out an episode in a while, or any jam for that matter. Palace Intrigue, we'll be right back. Possible sex bomb Princess Anne is set to make an anticipated visit to Essex, where she'll drop by the Breitling Sea Museum as Colonel-in-Chief of the Intelligence Corps. Excitement is building across the country as locals prepare for her arrival, with final plans underway to ensure everything is in order for the Princess Royal's visit, and Royal Watch is curious if she will wear her knee-high boots. Brightling Sea's Mayor John Carr said, She's such a wonderful, kind-hearted person, so I'm really looking forward to it. Mayor Carr did not comment on immature podcaster writers submitting silly items for me to read during a slow news week. 
Robert Hardman's new book, The Making of a King, sheds light on the current rift between Charles and Harry, suggesting that the king's silence towards his younger son is intentional and rooted in a desire to minimize stress during a challenging time. According to Hardman, royal advisers have encouraged Charles not to engage with Harry's calls and letters, especially since Charles is dealing with health concerns after a cancer diagnosis earlier this year. Hardman said, I know people keep saying, why doesn't he see Harry when he is in town? Why can't they just patch things up? But right now there is a sense that we've just got to keep the king's stress levels down. We don't want him to have extra things to worry about. Let's get through this. There is a sense that now is probably not the time. If you listen to what Harry has said in his TV series, in his book, in interviews, there's a lot to unpack. There are a lot of things he wants to get sorted out to go through to process. Right now, there's a sense that it's not the time, but I'm sure the king would like to normalize things. Looking ahead to 2025, the royal family seem poised for a return to more traditional active schedules. Following King Charles and Queen Camilla's recent tour of Australia and Samoa, a palace official has suggested that international royal visits will become more regular again. We're now working on a pretty normal-looking full overseas tour program for next year, they noted, calling it a high for us to end on to know that we can be thinking in those terms subject to sign-off by doctors. The king, who paused cancer treatment to embark on this recent tour, reportedly found it energizing. In that sense, the tour, despite its demands, has been the perfect tonic. Despite the hectic schedule, Charles showed no signs of being rattled when Indigenous lawmaker Lydia Thorpe heckled him in Canberra. He was completely unruffled, a royal source noted, adding, he believes free speech is the cornerstone of democracy and so everyone is entitled to their views. When asked about his stance on difficult issues, a palace aide said, he is always someone who wants to understand before he says anything. It's very easy to run away from some of these issues, but the king isn't one for doing that. Charles also reportedly shared how he felt about the tour, telling a crowd in Samoa, I shall always remain devoted to this part of the world and hope that I survive long enough to come back again and see you. Meanwhile, Kate Middleton has been making a gradual return to the public stage after completing chemotherapy following her own cancer diagnosis earlier this year. Expected at the Remembrance Day event next month, she has reportedly been engaged in private meetings and recently appeared in Southport with Prince William. As the palace prepares for a more normal 2025, a source summed up the purpose of these visits. The idea of these tours always is to leave a trace behind. Some podcasters who have had to fill the majority of their episodes with Harry and Meghan gossip will be very happy to have Kate back. And there you have it. If you'd like to email us, our address is thepalaceintrigue at gmail.com. Please follow us on Spotify, Apple, or the app of your choice. I'm Mark Francis. My thanks to John McDermott. This is Palace Intrigue and good times. <laughs>